Hi, my name is Sasquatch. You guys really liked the last tier list video that I did. There was so much support for it, so you know what? I'm gonna make another one. This is gonna be a zombies tier list based on speedrunning. Basically, I'm gonna be basing a lot of these rankings off of how much I like to see the zombie during a speedrun, how annoying they are during the speedrun, and also how easy it is to get 50% rules off of those zombies. Just as a quick example, if I hate seeing coneheads, I'll put it in F tier, and if I love seeing backup dancers, I'll put it in S tier. Just some simple things like that. We'll be going in almanac order, just to not confuse anybody, and we'll only be doing zombies from the almanac. No modified zombies, like from Zombotany or Zombotany 2. S is for I love them, F is for I hate them. In between, you could probably figure it out. So, let's go ahead and just get started. The first zombie on the list is the regular zombie. This zombie shows up all the time, and I love it so much. We love regular zombie because of just how absolutely fast it is. It's unbelievably fast. If you want your run to go fast, you're going to want a good amount of these. They are great in pretty much every run, and there's only a select couple of scenarios where you don't want them. And a couple of those scenarios would be, for example, like on a pool level where you don't have many repeaters set up, and then the second flag is coming, and there's a ton of these guys, and they're body blocking and all that good stuff. That's when you wouldn't want to see them, but every other scenario that I can think of is when you would want to see them. Like, you do want to see these guys a lot more than you want to see every other zombie in the game. Next up is the flag zombie, which we're going to put in... I'll put him in B tier. He's better than some of the other zombies that come in, but he's also kind of annoying at times. For example, if the flag zombie comes in and just eats your column 9 plant, whatever the column 9 plant might be, like it could be a gloom shroom. That's whenever this guy is at its worst. But other than that, this guy's not too annoying and also doesn't really do much for the 50% rule. I'll just put him in B tier because I like to see him more than some of the zombies in C tier, let's be honest. The next zombie up is my mortal enemy. Um, This is going in C tier. Coneheads are what make PBZ slow. Primarily, a lot of the time that you're going to lose in a PvZ speedrun is going to be to Coneheads, or it's going to be to unlucky Conehead spawns. And if Coneheads were eliminated from the game, this would this game would just be several times faster. But because Coneheads exist, they're not as fast. The game isn't as fast, and the runs aren't as fast. But regardless, there are some situations where you do want to see Conehead. There's just some niche scenarios. For example, you want to see Coneheads if you have a lot of instants down. So if you have like a wall of instants for the first flag of pool, then you'll want to see more of these because if you get more regular zombies, then the, zo the regular zombies will plow through the instants rather than saving them like Coneheads would. So if you get more Coneheads, then you get less regular zombies, which means less zombies overall. So that means your instance can be more efficient. Nice. These guys are a pain, but they're also fundamentally part of the game. So they're equally as important as they are annoying. So I'll put them in C tier. Next up is the absolute terrible Vaulter. I'm going to put it in D tier because there's a couple of things that I hate about Vaulters. They have a forward hitbox. What that means is that the hitbox isn't where the zombie's feet are. It's actually like where the zombie's chin is about. And it might even be more far, far forward than that. There are a couple of situations where the pull Vaulter actually straight up will avoid certain things, like an instant, for example, or if you're trying to stall it. It's hard to stall pull Vaulters because of their far forward hitbox. This is the case for a couple of zombies, but usually you're not stalling the other zombies that have a forward hitbox, and I'll talk about those later. But the zombies that have a forward hitbox, I'm pretty sure are just ones that move pretty quickly. I could be wrong about some of these, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. Dolphin has a forward hitbox, I know Football has a forward hitbox, and I think Ladder has a forward hitbox, and I also think Pogo has a forward hitbox some different weird hitboxes uh, with the zombies here. Vaulter is by far the worst because Vaulter is also probably the most common. And also I have survival bias, so Vaulters lose time in survivals by a lot. Man, look at you with your stupid looking pole. I hate you so much, dude. You're the worst. Moving on, we've got Bucketheads. And I'm gonna actually put Bucketheads in A tier. You love to see Bucketheads unless you don't have a counter for them. So in a couple of niche scenarios, for example, like if you don't have magnets or if you don't have an instant to deal with Bucketheads, like if you don't have Chomper, Bucketheads are terrible. They would be like down here easily. But since we do have those counters, Bucketheads are really, really good. Bucketheads are better than Coneheads because they have more health. And so because they have more health, they take up more of the 50% rule. So with these guys, it's really, really easy to get the 50% rule out of them. And usually you love seeing bucket heads just everywhere. If you get a lot of bucket heads, you can expect for a level to be pretty fast. 
especially for two flag, one flag levels. Yeah, if you just chomper a bucket head, that wave immediately ends and then the next one spawns. The next zombie on the list is actually from Knight. Where is it? There it is. Newspapers. The only time we don't like to see newspapers is during 2-1, and that's because newspapers become coneheads in that situation. There are no coneheads in 2-1, so you don't want to see newspapers because they're slower. But newspapers are infinitely faster than coneheads, and you want to see them more. The reason why is because they have such a, easy, a way easier time of activating 50% rules. The newspaper is the lowest health zombie with two wave points. If you don't know what a wave point is, it's basically the value that a wave has. There's 10 waves per flag, and each of those waves has a set amount of wave points. This guy has a value of 2, is also shared with like coneheads and pole vaulters, for example. But the newspaper has the lowest health out of these. So if you were to see like a conehead, for example, on wave four, your conehead would be way slower than your newspaper because the newspaper has way less health. So if you see a newspaper and you kill it, you'll get a 50% rule way faster. This is also why we love to see newspaper regular flags in survivals and why we also like to see more newspapers if we can. So I'm putting them in S tier. They're really easy to get 50% rules off. I really love to see them unless it's 2-1. That's pretty much it. The next zombie is the screen door. And I'm not actually going to put this guy in... I'm going to put this guy in C tier, but like high C tier. And there's a couple of different reasons for this. 2-3 basically relies on this guy getting killed. Not really, but you can try to think about it like that. And Fume Shroom is a pretty decent counter to this. Thankfully, because we have Fume Shroom, we don't have to worry about this at all. And using two fume shrooms kills these guys really quickly. They're still better than coneheads. In fact, I'm going to put them in low beats here. They're way better than coneheads to get because if you have fume shrooms up, these guys are no problem. And once you start seeing them, they come in second flag. So when you start seeing them, start planting fume shrooms and there'll be no issue. The only time that they're really an issue is like prediction. But again, just plant a fume shroom. You should be okay. And if your potato mine goes off to kill a conehead, that's Honestly, sometimes better than killing uh, the screen door. The next zombie is the football. And I'm going to put this guy above, above the bucket head. You might be able to argue an S position here, but I'm not going to put him there because of a couple of different reasons. The reason why he's not S tier is because he has so much health. Because he has so much health, you don't always have a counter all the time for this guy, unless you have chopper, in which case use chomper. You should usually most of the time have a counter for this, but because he has so much health, if you aren't able to kill him, then you have to manually kill him, and manually killing him is way, way worse than anything else on the screen right now. Football zombies are basically just beefed up bucket heads. Again, if you're not able to kill him immediately, he will waste so much time. It's not even funny. This guy is pretty hard to deal with if you don't have a counter for him. That being said, he's an A tier because usually you do have a counter for him. The only time you don't have a counter is like 5-4 and you use Gloom Shrooms. Gloom Shrooms are just really fast. So Gloom Shrooms kill these guys manually decently. Better than, better than anything else would in the game. Usually you have a counter like an instant or something like that to like an instant or a magnet, for example. You usually have those to, to counteract bucket, uh, football zombies. In early, in early any percent though, before you have magnet, you have to use instants all the time. And you usually save an instant purposefully for the football zombie. The next zombie is dancers. So we have the dancer zombie and we have Michael Jackson. I'm going to rank them both but I think they'll probably be pretty close to each other. So the dancer zombie probably goes in C tier. You usually don't want to see him ever. The reason why is because he spawns backup dancers and the backup dancers are just, I'll talk about those in a second. Also, the dancer's not easy to get a 50% rule on because of backup dancers. So if you get the backup dancers, he'll spawn one in front of him. And if you aren't able to uh, kill the backup dancer quickly, then it will take longer for you to get the 50% rule off of the dancer. The only time where this isn't really a problem is if you're using gloom shrooms, and that only applies to survivals, really. The only difference between the dancer and Michael Jackson, by the way, is Michael Jackson moves a little bit faster. I prefer Michael Jackson, but it depends on the category. So if you are playing like any percent, it depends on whether or not you like Michael Jackson or dancer more. It's really a personal preference thing. I'm gonna put Michael Jackson in front of the disco just because I like this one better for any percent runs and that's kind of the overarching category that I'm going for here I'm gonna I'm gonna just put both of them in seats here next up is backup dancers and um can we just 
I really don't want to talk about these guys. Okay, so backup dancers are probably one of the worst zombies that you ever want to see. The reason, though, is because the only time you're ever seeing them is when dancers show up. And when dancers show up, you know you're losing time because of these. The backup dancers are just a nuisance as well. And if you get a backup dancer that's off screen, for example, you can get a Michael Jackson or a disco zombie that dances in wave, uh, in column nine. And if that happens, the backup dancers spawn off screen. When they spawn off screen, you have to wait forever for them to come back on screen so that you can kill them. So if you're an unlucky soul who didn't doom in time or didn't dig up your all of your ninth column plants, you'll probably lose somewhere between like five and seven seconds, unless you hypnode. If you hypnote a zombie and it ran into the disco or the Michael Jackson, uh, you're losing like 30 seconds plus. It's, it's really bad. Backup dancers, horrible. Terrible zombies. I hate them. They don't even contribute to the 50% rule either, so killing them doesn't matter. The next zombie up is the regular tube zombie, but we're not going to put it in S tier. We're going to put it in low A tier. The reason why is because there's not actually an entry in the almanac for all ducky tube zombies. So there's just ducky tube zombie. There's not buckethead ducky tube or conehead ducky tube. There's just ducky tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to average them average them out and put it in like like high B tier, low A tier time type of deal. This could probably be interchangeable, but I'm going to put it in high A tier, maybe B tier like high B tier would be a better spot for it. The only time that these are really a problem is ambush zombies. And actually, now that I think about that, I'll put them in B tier. Ambush zombies are not fun. If you get a conehead ambush zombie, y you're probably losing a little bit of time, but if you react fast enough, you can save it. The problem is that ambush zombies are just annoying. So B tier for you. Since I've changed my mind, since I've changed my mind, I'm putting you in B tier. Next up is snorkels. I believe these have two waypoints. I might be wrong about that. I can't remember. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put snorkels in a high D tier though. They're not as bad as vaulters, but are they as bad as dancers? I don't know. I'm thinking about putting dancers in D tier, like here, and then putting snorkel in C tier. I don't know. I'll leave it the same that I had it earlier, and we'll just put snorkel in D tier. Snorkel is annoying most of the time because it requires a lot of attention. For example, if you see a snorkel, you have to immediately divert all of your attention to that snorkel specifically. Unless you're seeing a cone head and you can squash it, or if you're seeing something else that you can get rid of relatively quickly that can pass the 50% rule, you, you can usually ignore these guys. But the thing is that they require so much attention because if you ignore them for too long, they kill your entire defense and it's it's rip run but if you focus on them too much you won't be looking forward so you won't be able to actually counter the waves that are coming out that actually matter whenever it comes to snorkel zombies they're just a nuisance usually and if you can't tangle kelp them or squash them you're usually using a chopper which is way more expensive unless of course you see other stuff within the wave in which case you just stall them with a lily pad and a sunflower and then repeaters take care of them so they don't have that much health that's the one of the redeeming qualities actually because of because of that they don't have much health i'll put them above dancers and i will put dancers in d tier i've decided to do this because dancers are worse than snorkels i don't like i like seeing snorkels better than i like seeing dancers but i hate vaulters <laughs> anyways next up is zombonies and zombonies are going in a tier the reason is because you always have an instant counter to these if you if these show up you chomper it you squash it, you can have a potato mine sometimes, and you always are bringing chomper in pool level, so it's no problem at all. This is just kind of free 50% rules. It's it's up there with uh, football zombie. Football zombie can go here, arguably, in S tier. Next up is the bobsled team. I actually will put this in C tier. So the weird thing about bobsled team is it's got niche scenarios where it's actually faster to get these, but it also is usually not faster. And uh, it's not faster because of body blocking. They do contribute to the 50% rule, but not very much. So you've just got to be careful on how much body blocking is actually happening. For example, if you were to get the bobsled team and some normal zombies, you would focus the bobsled team, but it would be harder to get the 50% rule because of how much body blocking there is. So just keep that in mind whenever you're going for. They usually aren't a problem though because you kill Zombonies really just immediately. They can show up sometimes though. Next up is Dolphins and I'm gonna put Dolphins in... Part of me wants to put Dolphins in D tier but the other part of me wants to put them in low C tier and I'll, I'll explain why. Dolphins have less HP than Coneheads and they're more wave value I think. So they have less HP than Coneheads with more wave points which makes them better inherently but they're also really annoying and if you can't deal with them quickly they will hurt you a lot 
they have less health than Coneheads, but I also think they are still pretty beefy, but it's also because they're so fast. So I think their, their health is compared to a Vaulter, but they're so much faster. So if you don't deal with them quickly, then you are, you're just losing time. I'm going to put them in, I'll put them in D tier because I don't like them as much as seeing these other three. Yeah, I'll put them in D tier. I like seeing these other guys better than I like seeing dolphins. But again, still a lot of these guys are worse than dolphins. Dolphins aren't the worst thing in the world, especially if you have Tangle Kelp or Chomper up and ready to rumble. All right, that concludes pool actually. So next up is the insane asylum zombie, Rinkadinks, also known as Jack in the Box. Wrinkle, dinkle, dinkle. I'm going to put you in C tier. But above Coneheads, I like seeing you better than Coneheads. Because you have less health than Coneheads. Wrinkle Dinkle. Basically, these guys are what you would think of as Pandora's box. Because they're holding it right in their hands. Right there. These guys can be really good or really bad. The reason why they can be really good is because they have less health than Coneheads. And they're not hard to kill. The reason why they're really bad is because... Uh, um, that one mechanic that they have. Yeah, they can explode. And if they explode... They kill your plants. The one iconic thing that I know about Rinkadinks is that if they explode next to an instant that you just planted, they will explode and the instant won't. So your instant will just be useless. We see that we see this sometimes in 4-1 with Doomshroom, where the Rinkadink will actually blow up the Doomshroom. It'll be it's crazy. It's really funny to see to see as well. The Jack in the Box kind of just does an Uno reverse card on the Doomshroom. Nah, Doomshroom, you're getting nuked this time. Also, I never noticed that he was wearing like a insane asylum like jacket. I don't know what they call this. They're using like the what do you call these things? Restraints. Like, they're using the restrainers. Anyways, moving on. Next up is Balloon Zombies, and I'm gonna put these up in S tier as well. I don't want to put them up in S tier because I like seeing them, but sometimes it's just like, meh, you know? Like, you like seeing them, but sometimes you don't really care about if you see them or not. Seeing them in mass is really, really good. So if you see a lot of, a lot of Balloon Zombies, you blow over them, and that's just an immediate 50% rule if you have enough of them. The problem is that if these guys are paired up with a Conehead, you have to kill the Conehead first. And if that happens enough times, you have to use a Blover regardless of if there's Balloon Zombies in a wave. They have so little health that it is it doesn't even- it hardly makes it any matter. In 4-3, we ignore the Balloon Zombie. And the reason why we ignore it is because the regular zombie has enough HP with the Balloon Zombie to actually get the 50% rule. And again, the 50% rule is not 100% all the time, 50. Sometimes it's between 35% and 50%. So that means that you can actually get the 50% rule off of this basic zombie and not touch the Balloon Zombie. I'll put them in A tier. I won't put them in S tier though. Like I'll put them in A tier here because they're not like free 50% rules all the time because you have to get enough of them because of how little health they have. Next up, miners. I hate miners. So I'm actually going to put this in D tier above dancers. I would rather have dancers than miners. <laughs> the reason why is because miners can still get stalled. You can still deal with them pretty relatively easily. You can doom shroom them if you do the right timing. So these guys, not too, not terrible, like not F tier but they're still pretty bad. You don't want to see them because it's just HP that you can't get to underground. So if you do get unlucky and you get like two miners in one wave, or if you get a miner and like two basics, the two basics aren't going to equal the, the health of the miner. So you're not always guaranteed to get the rule. And if you're not guaranteed to get the rule, you have to wait for the miner to get up, do his little dizzy animation, then walk forward, and then you can chop her. Next up is Pogos. <laughs> Oh boy. I don't like Pogos, personally. Now, Pogos are probably not F tier, because Pogos are- they don't have much health at all, but they move so fast. So I'm gonna put them in F tier. They've killed me before. These are like, it's like Pogo zombies are the one zombie that speedrunners struggle with dying to, aside from maybe Gargantuars. If you're not careful, they will just slip by and, and you will you will be seeing a sad end to your run. Again, they're not hard to counter. I don't I'm not gonna put them in F tier, but I just I think they're worse to see than dancers. They don't have much health, so they don't contribute a huge amount to the 50% rule. But again, they're weak so you can kill them pretty easily. Anyways, the last one is the Yeti, and I actually am going to put the Yeti in D tier. The reason why is because it has so much health that can't be removed 
For example, the only way to really deal with this guy is to instant. And if you don't have an instant up whenever he comes, then you just have to deal with the time loss. The only time when he comes really in general is past like like new game plus or survivals runs. That's usually whenever he's coming in because you you don't see him in any percent, obviously. So the Yeti is never a problem in any percent. But in survivals and new game plus, new game plus shopless, yeah, this guy's a pretty big issue. Cause in for example, in New Game Plus Shopless, you don't always have an instant to deal with. In Survivals, it's not as bad because you have Glooms, and in regular New Game Plus, it's also not as bad because you have Glooms. So bottom of D tier, not quite F tier because you don't hate to see him every time. Sometimes you're like, oh, free instant. And that concludes Fog. Next up is Bungie Zombies. So there's two types of Bungie Zombies. Bungie Zombies that are bungee zombies, like regular bungee zombies by themselves, and then the bungee zombies that give the ambush zombies. The bungee zombies that give ambush zombies would be F tier, bottom of S F, F tier. But bungee zombies that don't give ambush zombies are actually just free, like the, the wave is free, free HP. For example, Tass, I'm pretty sure just uses bungee zombies in all of the levels that they're there. They just make the bungee zombie go to a tile that doesn't have a plant on it. Again, that's super, super rare and that will hardly ever happen, but bungee zombies in general, usually just free HP. So kind of like the, kind of like balloon zombies, I'll put them, yeah, I'll put them in B tier below balloon zombies. The next up is ladder zombies. Ladder zombies aren't actually as bad as screen doors, so they're better than screen doors. They do have one problem, and it's that they're fast, and their speed can sometimes be jarring, especially for a roof level where you're using star fruits or something like that. For these guys, usually you use Chomper or Squash. Basically just instant it because it has enough health to be dangerous, but it doesn't have so much health that it's like bucket heads or football zombies. Probably somewhere in B tier. Maybe, maybe down here. I'll put it here for now. Again, this, this tier list is not the end all be all of zombie opinions, but it's just kind of what I'm thinking of off the top of my head. All right, next zombie after ladder is catapults. You never like to see catapults. Usually you're hoping for catapults to not be bad. That's usually what you're hoping for. So most of the time you don't want to see catapults ever. And if you do see catapults, you have to squash them. And if you get too many catapults, then it's bad. It's particularly dangerous for pumpkin gloom users, but it's also not as bad for garlic users. If you use garlic, catapults are never a concern, unless you see them in your garlic rows, which you can just squash. But if you are using pumpkin glooms, catapults are like almost run killers. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with those catapults. They'll come in and squish your plants. Not to mention, if you guys haven't seen that clip of catapults ruining my entire uh, roof run before, <laughs> I, I suggest you go check that out because yeah, that's what catapults can do in survivals as well. Catapults probably probably just like low D tier or F tier. I, I hate catapults so much. Next up is Gargantuars. Post editing Sasquatch here. I'm about to say some really dumb stuff about the Gargantuar being C tier. No, Gargantuar is F tier. I'll show you guys a reviewed, uh, a revised tier list after this. But uh, Gargantuar is definitely not C tier. Gargantuars are probably D tier, I'm gonna be honest. They have so much condensed HP that it's not hard to get the 50% rule out of them, and they're also such a big threat that you're always preparing for them. So I'll put them in C tier. They're not as bad as they seem at first glance, but again, if you waste your squash, like I've done several thousands of times in runs, then they'll be a big problem, and you'll have to wait for Doomstream cooldown, or you'll have to wait for a second squash cooldown. That's whenever they'll, they'll be an actual problem. The other problem with them is 5-9. 5-9 can spawn gargs at any point during the ninth, uh, during the third flag. So if you are not careful, you will get a 19th wave garg and that will not be fun. I mean, that's just, that can, that's just something that RNG can kill you with. 19th wave gargs are not fun, but you have to save squash throughout the entire third flag. And again, if you do get that 19th wave, if you do get that 29th wave garg, I'm sorry, you're just losing time. 5-9, probably the only trouble thing for uh, Gargantuars. Other than that, they're really not that bad. Unless you consider the next zombie, the Imp, which is the absolute worst zombie in the entire game, bar none. Kind of like the backup dancers, the Imp doesn't contribute to the 50% rule as far as I'm aware. And it's just annoying for like a Gargantuar. If you miss like final doom timing, there's just an Imp now sitting in your back lawn. Usually it's not a hard thing to deal with, but you use your squash for the final wave to kill the Garg. 
So if you miss the Doom Shroom, you don't have Doom Shroom or Squash. So you better hope that your Gloom Shroom timing is off cooldown. You better hope that your Gloom Shroom's off cooldown to kill this guy. Because if not, then you run the risk of dying, actually. Yeah, so at their best, imps do nothing. At their worst, imps, like, almost kill runs. I hate, I hate imps so much. You know what the definition of an imp is? Like a baby demon. Look at that face. I mean, baby deep like if that's not a demon i don't know what is imps terrible terrible zombie i hate them and finally zomboss come here zomboss zomboss is probably like a tier but here's the thing i'm no longer ranking this off of 50 percent rules because zomboss doesn't have 50 percent. you just have to kill him i'm just ranking this off of how fun the boss fight is the problem is, at the end of a run, like an any percent run or something like that, Zomboss is like the last thing you want to deal with. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, it, it is the last thing you deal with, but you don't want to deal with it because it's just, if you misplay, it's losing a lot of time. And if you play correctly, then sometimes you might be able to get bustless bustless three cycle. There's a way to get bustless three consistently, but I don't, I don't really. I'm not that good at the game. Anyways, so yeah, Zomboss, probably like, probably like B tier for fun value. At the end of the run, you don't want to do the boss fight, but it's, it's still kind of, it's still fun. Like, it's still fun to do the boss fight. You just don't want to. You've, you spent the last three and a half hours doing a run. You don't want to lose your entire run to, to Zomboss. So it has, sometimes it can, there can be a lot of pressure on this boss fight, but I still think it's fun enough to put it in B tier. So there you have it. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that I still underutilized S tier? Because I certainly did in my plants video. There's way more plants than zombies, and D tier and B tier look a little overpopulated, so maybe there's a couple of things that could be moved around. This, again, this was just made off the top of my head. I don't have, like, I haven't looked intricately into these, but again, definitely S tier is definitely where it needs to be. I think A tier it could be switched around a little bit, maybe with some B tier, uh, B -tier guys. You know, C tier is pretty okay. Maybe the guard could go down like to D tier and then maybe you could move the dancers to F tier if you were terrible about it. But regardless, this is my tier list. I think I like it, to be honest. I like it right now. Maybe I'll do another tier list video in the future where I correct this tier list whenever I get a, be uh, a better any percent time. But for now, I think I like this. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, press the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't because we got so much support on the last tier list video. If you guys wanna see more tier list videos, subscribe to my channel for sure because I'm making one more and it's gonna be super awesome. If you guys have any suggestions of other tier lists that I could do, I'm open to ideas. I have one more in mind that I definitely wanna do and then I have a couple of other ideas maybe sprinkled around that I could possibly put into the the mix as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a freaking awesome day.